Welcome to this week's Wednesdays in Prayer. We are giving God thanks once more for the opportunity for us to join together in reflection and prayer. Our scripture reading today comes from St. John 14, verse 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. This is the word of the Lord. It is usually the custom for persons to bequeath property or possession to individuals in their wills. Jesus had spent three years with his friends, and as he was preparing to leave them, he offered the best gift he had, his peace. His gift was unlike any other gift, and that is why it was not like what the world had to offer. Let's look at what the word gift means. A gift is usually given at the initiative of the giver. The receiver has nothing to do with it and may not even deserve to get it. The giver decides what type of gift and the basis on which the gift will be given. Others cannot complain or object to the quality of the gift that is given. The receiver can be an active or passive participant in the giver's life. A gift can therefore be undeserved. Because it is a gift, the receiver has no grounds on which he or she can complain on the quality or the cost of the gift. The giver decides it is his or her prerogative. Let us look at the term peace of mind as used by Jesus Christ. Some persons define peace as the absence of war. Thus, it has to do with the relationship between persons. However, the context of Jesus' speech was one in which he was comforting his disciples because he was about to leave them. Naturally, they would be sad and troubled by such news. Even the promise of another comforter would not necessarily console them at the moment. The fear of life without him would affect how they live their lives, how they face the challenges before them, would determine whether they give up or not. Thus, the use of peace here by Jesus is dealing with the state of one's mind and heart. Everything we do in life, good or bad, is dictated by the state of our mind. All our thoughts and ideas are conceived in our minds and in our hearts. If one's mind or heart is not at the right place, it can result in chaos or confusion for us. When we are faced with the challenges of life and must make life-changing decisions, we could find ourselves in serious trouble. It doesn't matter what circumstances we find ourselves in or the experiences we would have. It is the state of one's mind, one's heart, that will guide us in the way forward. Jesus' gift of peace to disciples was to have them live their lives in any situation or to face any experience. Jesus' gift to us is to help us cope under any circumstances. He is saying to us today, as you face life's challenges, as you live among the chaos and confusion of the world, as you must take a stand against the opposition by outside forces, here is my peace. His gift of peace is the best gift that any person could bequeath to his friend. Here is a gift that would not be affected by the passage of time, but would remain timeless. It is not like that of the world. Here is a gift that could not be stolen, taken away, or misplaced. It is not like that of the world. Here is a gift that would help us to relate to every and anyone, even those who oppose us, those who seek to destroy us, those who walk in the presence of their enemy without fear or evil, for his peace will be with them to provide the calmness that they need. The world cannot give such peace.
Persons often make the mistake then to think that peace, especially the one that we receive from the world, involves absence of confusion and individuals are always on friendly terms. But what about one's own personal state of mind, even when you have the comforts of materialism? What about one's contentment when you must face your personal, emotional, psychological and spiritual crises? The world cannot offer and provide the comfort or peace you need in such situations. What state of mind are you in now? Have you experienced the peace of Christ? You can have it today. It is the peace you will need to make life what it should be. It is not conditional like that of the world, and nothing in life can take it away. Amen. Today, as we go to prayer, I invite us to pray for justice in our world. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, thanks again for a new day. A day where we, your people, are alive to recognize your grace and blessings. Thanks for life and for the provisions you have made for our survival. Today, Lord, as we thank you for all that you have done for us, we are saddened by our activities where others are treated wrongfully. Today, some are hurting because of the indiscretions of others. Some persons have selfishly acted against others which have left them in pain. Those in places of authority and power have acted unjustly against the weak and powerless and have placed them in positions of helplessness and suffering. Lord, we are saddened that we have not learned how to love each other even though we have been beneficiaries of your abundant love and grace. We have allowed our personal aspirations to cloud our thinking and forget to see those around us who we might be impacting negatively with our actions. Open our eyes, Lord, so that we can see those in need and reach out to help. Open our ears to hear the cries of the hurting so that we can draw closer to them. Open our hearts so that they can know that they are loved and cared for and do not need to journey alone. Give us compassion to be there with them in their darkest hour. Use us, Lord, to make a difference in their lives. Lord, we ask today that you will right the wrong that has been taking place in our world today. Vindicate those who have been treated unjustly and bring peace where many would want to take vengeance. Help us not to act rashly in making a bad situation worse. Instead, let us learn to trust you to act as you see fit. We pray that you will speak to the hearts of those who need to make amends and restitution to do so so that the world that you intend for us to live in can be a reality. A world in which the weak are protected and no one will go hungry. A world in which the resources are shared for the enjoyment of everyone. A world where different races, cultures and creeds can live together in harmony and mutual respect. A world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Help us to avail ourselves for the task, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers and act in your will. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks once again, friends, for joining us today. I'm Oral Campbell. God bless you. Until next time.